was a hoax. Westboro Baptist Church has a website called GodHatesFacts.com. The people of Sand Springs, Oklahoma, had never seen anything quite like it. To see my son's name on a, on a flyer, I couldn't bear it. It is wrong. It is a sin. I mean, because God did create Adam and Eve. That's known as the fag, that gay kid. I dread it every day. It opened my eyes to how much discrimination we do have. Tonight, The Mirror. One town struggle with God, gays, bigotry, and compassion. From ABC News. <laughs> is Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. If you want to be offended by tonight's broadcast, you will no doubt find a way. Perhaps, in fact, there is no way of dealing with the struggle of a young homosexual in the heart of Oklahoma's Bible Belt without offending somebody. And what is Nightline, after all, if not a Northeastern mainstream media outlet? Indeed, it's worse than you think. All the original reporting for this story was done by Ann Hull, a staff writer for the Washington Post, if you please. You can just bet you know where this story is coming from, can't you? Well, take a deep breath and suspend judgment for a few minutes. Nightline producer Dan Morris did rely heavily on Ann Hull's reporting, which covered hundreds of hours spread over much of 2004. But most of this story is told through the voices of a deeply religious Baptist family, the pastor of their local church, the community, all of them trying desperately to reconcile their profound belief that homosexuality is a sin against God with the love and compassion that they feel for one of their own. 17-year-old Michael Shackelford. I'll be somewhere between I love you and what you're feeling now. Looking for a place to fall apart. My mom and sister, they had no clue. Because Merle Haggard was my favorite. My first car was a truck. An old brown truck. I love my truck. It's my babe. Be Blair and Merle Haggard. And they had no clue. That's why they couldn't understand, you know, what went wrong. They said I'm the manliest of all men. It was shattering. Um, it scared me. It hurt. Uh, of course, with my religious beliefs, it was something that just was not, you know, you just didn't do, you know. And I had read the verses that, you know, that said homosexuals will not inherit the, ki the kingdom of heaven. I thought it was, it was disgusting at first. It made me feel, it's like I knew my brother growing up my entire life, and now I didn't know how to talk to him. It was gross to think, you know, oh my gosh, that's my brother. I told him many times through lots of tears that I think the one thing, especially a mother, um, I said, you know, I don't want to get to heaven, you know, at the end of this lifetime and you not be there with me. And I, that, that in itself hurts more than anything. That's the biggest fear. Springs is seven miles from Tulsa, but in many ways it's a lot farther. It really is a small town. I came to Sand Springs to write about the experience of a young gay person coming of age in the Bible Belt in the year 2004, which uh, the topic of homosexuality and same-sex marriage was, was very much in the national conversation. Within two weeks of Oklahoma's 2004 legislative session, 10 anti-gay bills were introduced uh, into the legislature. There was a huge vitriolic debate going on about same-sex marriage in the state, one of the fiercest in the whole country. I would say overall that uh, in, in Sand Springs, we are much like the state. We are very conservative. 
and the, the view of homosexuality is one uh, that is a sin. It is wrong in that um, it is a sin, and I don't, I don't think that they should be able to like that. I mean, because God did create Adam and Eve, and that's just what I believe. I sent him to um, a psychiatric center. And at that time, believing that homosexuality was a disease, an abnormality, um, I thought I could get help for him there. At first, I was nervous, so I thought, I thought my mom was going to try to have him change me. But then it was a safe place. I got to be myself. It wasn't an issue there. But the problem was is that they were accepting of this, what I called chosen behavior. Uh, I got very frustrated with the psychiatric field. Michael attended Charles Page High School. It's the one high school in Sand Springs. For Michael, the school atmosphere got pretty tense last year. I was known as the fag, that gay kid. I'd make sure to walk in the halls when a lot of people were around. I, I never went to the bathroom. Not even, I was just afraid to go to the bathroom. And I dreaded it every day. I'd pull up to the parking lot and just sit there for a minute, just kind of praying that it's not as bad. Maybe they'll just leave me alone. After Michael had been gay for some months, Janice went to her pastor, Bill Eubanks, at Cornerstone Church and talked to Bill about Michael and what they could do to bring back Michael to the heterosexual way of, of living. For without him, we are nothing. As Michael continued to go to church, the atmosphere in Oklahoma became more charged. It was a political season. President Bush came out and called for a constitutional amendment on banning gay marriage. So Pastor Eubanks needed to address this from the pulpit some way. But he went up to Janice before the church sermon this one Sunday when he was going to preach about it. Uh, I said, Janice, uh, I just want to make you aware of this, that, that I'll be speaking about this issue. And, uh, and I, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not trying to, to uh, uh, jump down anyone's throat or, or anything or condemn. But I feel like I need to speak this truth. Eubanks proceeded to say from the pulpit what he thought about gay marriage and homosexuality as the Bible taught it. And Janice was mortified. She thought the whole church, there was probably 500 people in church that day, were thinking that Eubanks was directing a sermon at Janice and Michael. One weekend, it was a cold February weekend, Michael painted flames on the front of his Chevy Cheyenne truck. He thought it looked like something he'd seen at the stock car races. I took so much pride into that because I did it all by myself with masking tape. I was so proud going to school that day with my little, my flames, but quickly shot down. And they're pointing, laughing, flipping me off saying that now I'm a flaming homo, flaming fag, and they're yelling queer, so I just kept driving, drove home. When we come back, the Washington Post series on Michael improves his life dramatically and changes life in a small town in ways it could never have imagined. I saw the flyer. I really thought it was a hoax. I thought, this, this cannot be real. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Cadillac. It was first a shock to see Michael's uh, picture on the front page. I mean, that was something. Uh, what I felt as I was reading the Washington Post article, I was reading it and it was like my life just laid out right there. You know, I'm reading about myself and about my family. 
It's hard for some people to understand. Here you have a mom who hadn't told anybody that she had a gay son, and yet she's willing to talk to the Washington Post. And Janice really believed that there was a public service element to this. She felt like there were other mothers and other parents probably going through this very isolating, lonely, terrifying experience and she felt if there was one other person who might read this story it would be worth it would be worth any risk the first thing i thought was oh my goodness could we not have used last names <laughs> that that was uh, i was a little fearful with that um i learned things about michael that i didn't know and that was hard uh, i don't i don't want to read stuff like that i, I don't want to know some things um uh, it brought tears just you know, I cried, um, but it was very accurate. Everything that um, that was said that I did, you know, with praying over Michael, quoting scriptures, uh, praying over his room, um, everything was accurate. I did that. He received hundreds of letters from readers from around the country, many of them men who had grown up in rural America, in the heartland, in farming regions, and had had Michael's exact same experience. I got this big package in the mail. I, was, I said from Ted Allen, and I had no, no idea who Ted Allen was. I opened it, and there was a book, their new book, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. And then, then I recognized him. I was like, wow. I read the letter that he wrote me, and just amazing, just the support from him. It was probably, as I can't remember, maybe two weeks after the Washington Post article. Um, our pastor called me at work and said that he'd received a, a fax from a Westboro Baptist Church. When I saw that flyer, uh, I was shocked, a, a little bit angry. H how dare they? My sister called and said, <laughs> I don't know if you pray to God, but you better start. I was like, why? She's like, well, people are going to come protest our church because of you. I had walked in to my job. And a lady, um, two of the ladies there were just kind of looking at me. And I said, what? They said, you haven't seen the flyers? Well, when I saw the flyer, I really thought it was a hoax. I thought, this, this cannot be real. And I, I pulled up the uh, website, and I began to read, and it, it became unbelievable. And I started having this, this uh, almost sickening feeling about, can this, can this be real? Westboro Baptist Church is run by a minister named Fred Phelps. And Fred Phelps has a website called GodHatesFags.com. And their main mission in life is to target, humiliate gay people. When the gay marriage blitz happened in San Francisco in February last year, the Phelps crew flew out there to protest on the steps of City Hall. So they are into public theater and, and humiliation and gays are their targets. Uh, after I did some research on them on the internet, then I found out who they were. And uh, then I thought, okay, here we go. I was so upset, I was so angry. I couldn't even, I could not even speak. I was so upset. Just to see what was written on it, that somebody could write that about my baby brother. On these flyers, there's a picture of Michael Shackelford, there's a picture of the Washington Post article. God hates fags and fag enablers, the flyer says. Ergo, God hates Michael Shackelford. The flyer asks, was there no gospel preacher in Sand Springs or Broken Arrow to tell Michael and his Washington Post tutor Ann Hull that sodomy is a monstrous sin against God that will destroy the life and damn the soul? I was worried. Not worried about the protest, but about my mom. To see my son's name on a, on a flyer, his picture, and to say, God hates Michael Shackelford, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't bear it. And um, so I was gonna go pick up this flyer and look at it. As I was leaving my first job, my brother is uh, waiting for me. My brother and my side of the family did not know about Michael. My brother goes to the coffee shop and is presented this flyer. And so he meets me and asks me if I had seen the flyer. And I just, we sat there in the truck and cried together. Um, he said, I think it's time to tell, you know, your family. 
When we come back, a tense confrontation over Michael and a surprising reaction in his hometown. live like the devil, you're going to die and go straight to hell. The morning of church, that Sunday morning, I guess we were prepared. We knew that they were going to be lined up at the entrance to the church. We're sp here specifically at, at this church and in this evil town today because his lifestyle is touted as merely an innocent alternate lifestyle that some people in the Bible Belt might struggle with from time to time. I went because I wanted to, to see. I wanted to see what was going on, see their signs, and see who they were, and see the church's reaction. You know, I wanted to be there since I felt like I was the cause of it. I felt kind of bad. It was very shocking because not only were the signs um, derogatory towards homosexuals, you know, they were things like, your preacher is lying to you. Uh, thank God for 9-11. Uh, they were dragging the American flag and walking on it. I did get the, uh, the church ready. I spoke with them and shared with them that they were coming, and, and I asked the church to, uh, to fast and pray, uh, which they did. I also knew that uh, the scripture says you do not, do not return evil for evil. So to me, if we were to step aside and try to take them on, that would distract from who we are. We're coming to worship God. That Sunday morning at Cornerstone, three or four hundred folks arrived for church, passing through that gauntlet of signs and protesters. Once inside the doors of the church, it was vibrant, guitars were going, people were praising in a high fashion, and Eubanks said from the pulpit, God loves us all, and there was applause. And then he said, God loves us all, and the place was on its feet. There was an excitement and intensity with the people uh, because their plans, their prayers, was to walk in victory. As I walked into church, of course, I had a lot of people come up and give me a hug. There were people that were supporting Michael that was supporting Shelly, that was um, a family members uh, supporting me, and I think people that just were curious. A guy came up to Michael, crew cut, blue jeans, holding his own Bible, and he said, man, you be who you are. We got your back. I felt pretty bad for him, and I just pretty told him that it opened my eyes to how much discrimination we do have. Everybody who came up to me was supportive, and while we were standing up there, uh, guy drove by and gave me a thumbs up. Michael was overcome by the support. He couldn't believe they were standing b behind him. In the congregation, uh, as I said, Michael, we love you, they, they burst out in applause, because they do. Uh, and, and if you were to ask them what their feelings are about homosexuality, uh, they believe it's a sin. Uh, but they love Michael. You're desperate! You're desperate! You're sick! The town really was outraged when Phelps arrived. The day of the protest at the school, lots of parents and kids had painted their cars with their own slogans to counter the vile slogans on the Phelps signs. So it really was a, a, a clash of sensibilities, and it, it was all played out on the grounds of the school. You're as one girl was walking off school grounds, she had a backpack on, she was a student at, the, at Charles Page, she turned around to the protesters and said, leave our homos alone. And it's a little funny, but I think it's how a lot of people in the town felt. Michael Shackelford might be a sinner, but he's our sinner, and how dare you come here and question our godliness. Michael loves Oklahoma. It's the only place he's ever wanted to live. He loves riding in his truck on a summer night with the windows rolled down, riding across the Arkansas River. But he's not sure this place will accept him and he can live a life here as, as he really is. 
kind of tossed up on that. About feeling welcome. I mean, the reception that I get is wonderful, but still, that's just one of those sins that people just keep looking down upon. So I still just feel out of place. I don't think harassment will ever go away for anyone, especially in such a touchy subject as homosexuality. There are so many people that are so against it, especially in the area where we live in what we would call the Bible Belt. Homosexuality is just almost forbidden. And if you go to a more liberal state, I don't think that he would get as harassed. I don't think I'd stick around here. I yeah. think that if, if I were gay, then I'd probably move to a more liberal state where I'd be more likely to be accepted. I'd probably head for California. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I'll be back with a footnote to our story in a moment. In the final analysis, nothing has really been resolved. After that incident with the flames he'd painted on his truck, Michael Shackelford dropped out of high school. Next week, he plans to take his equivalency exam. He doesn't know what he'll do after that. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.